Welcome to Max ECU Training Part 33. This video, we're going to be taking a look at working with our open loop style idle control with a idle control stepper solenoid. We'll find engines like a 2JZ or a 4G63 engine. Some of the older GM applications will be using a stepper motor for idle control. Stepper motor is going to be different than the last video looking at a pulse with modulated control. We're going to find those are common on Hondas and Mazdas and older Nissans. We're going to be taking a look at how to set up a stepper motor in this video, learning how to work with the percentage of step programming within the open loop idle control routine, and then how to integrate working with this open loop control for cold start assist. There's going to be a lot to cover. Let's jump into our video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our open loop style idle control, utilizing a stepper motor within our control routine. The last video, we looked at our open loop control and we looked at it based on a pulse with modulated style idle control solenoid. It's going to be the difference of working with these two different types of idle control motors or solenoids fitted to our engine. That's really going to be dependent on what type of engine we're tuning. Certain OEM manufacturers ran pulse with modulated control and others ran stepper. Dealing with something like a Honda, a Nissan, so Nissans would be SR, RB, v, VG engines, those ran a pulse with modulated solenoid. We're dealing with something like a Toyota 2JZ or an older GM that had idle control motor not drive by wire or something like a 4G63 which is a Mitsubishi Evolution engine. Those ran at idle stepper motor. So it's really the difference on an OEM manufacturer level as to what type of idle control motor we'll be dealing with that would fit it to the engine from the manufacturer. Now you can certainly delete it and, uh, and bypass it completely or again if we're sticking with that OEM uh, type of functionality, we're wiring in our Max either with a plug and play application or wiring it in using a universal application but wiring into all the stock sensors. We have to understand the differences here and what we're trying to control and how it works because it will be slightly different. Now the same concepts that I talked about in the last video will apply in this video so I'm going to be doing a lot of um, the same exact uh, uh, information we're going to be talking about but we're going to have this again specific to a stepper motor. There's going to be some things in here specific for that stepper uh, type of tutorial. So what I want to do here is first start off the video and talking about the basics of our idle control. We need to understand what we're actually controlling, what we're trying to do, which will allow us to understand when we get into a little bit further in the video, actually integrating the idle control motor, what we're trying to accomplish. So first thing I want to do is jump in here under start and move down here under tuning. We're going to be looking in our ignition angle table. This is where we command the base spark timing from. And we know at idle conditions that we'll be operating right about here from negative three to full engine vacuum, 1200 RPM and below. This will be the typical idle area for most any engine. We can see our spark timing command is commanded here at 10 degrees. If we take a look down here under our ignition angle, what it's actually reported at, we're running 10 degrees, so there's no offsets being applied to this. The spark timing right now, being applied at 10 degrees, is allowing me to idle here at a roughly 1080 RPM. We'll find here if I reduce my timing down from 10 to something like zero, that'll reduce the amount of engine torque because the cylinder pressure will drop as I go in and reduce the timing. If I go and increase my timing value here from 10 to 20, that'll go and increase the cylinder pressure, increasing the engine torque, which will increase the idle speed. So our spark timing will play a role in our idle control because it's going to be manipulating our idle torque. We also have another aspect for idle control, which will be the airflow. How much airflow is being ingested into the engine? More airflow, as long as we're giving enough fuel, will allow it to produce more torque. Less airflow will allow it to produce less torque. So we can influence the idle control either based on airflow or based on spark timing. Now it's to note, if we're talking about uh, working with either airflow or spark timing, that the airflow is going to be the more coarse adjustment. It'll have more of a large effect as airflow is being ingested into the engine compared to spark timing. Spark timing is more of a fine tuning adjustment. Although both will have an effect on the torque production out of the engine and ultimately the idle control, you can always think of air as the coarse adjustment and spark timing as the fine adjustment. That should always be in the back of your mind as you're making your changes and dialing in your idle control with your max. So in this particular format here as we're dealing with this, we don't have in my calibration file right now under ignition here, we don't have anything turned on with our idle spark feedback to influence our torque production out of our engine at idle. That would be our mechanical idle that we need to make sure is right. So what we can do here, in order to make sure that we're hitting the desired idle speed we're at, because I don't want to be here at 1080, I want to idle around 9950 on my engine. We can actually use our spark timing and offset the spark timing at idle 
to reduce the torque down. Now, one thing to note here when we're talking about our purely mechanical idle, we need to adjust the throttle plate in most cases. So we need to go and adjust the set screw on our throttle plate to have more airflow come into the engine so that we can pick up our idle speed. We always wanna have our idle speed here when we're adjusting things mechanically on a warm engine, about 200 RPMs, maybe 300 maximum, over wherever the desired idle speed you wanna be at. That makes sure that you have a reserve of airflow or engine torque. And we can manipulate the torque production once we have enough airflow with spark timing. We'll find that we typically wanna park our airflow at idle um, and have that pretty consistent and then move our spark timing to be able to increase or decrease the torque on the fly and do it almost instantly to get our idle RPM under control and to have the desired results that we're after. Um, that is gonna be something that you definitely want to uh, make sure you do. You want Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't wanna miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.